The internet is filled with all kinds of strange and interesting memes. So many memes. And if you spend enough time on it, you'll eventually find this one. This is the Doomer. If you've never seen it before, the Doomer is a meme often drawn as a young man in his early 20s. He's sad and depressed, and he's shown with captions like, Ugh, another night in, no hope of career advancement. Cares, but knows there's nothing he can do. Knows he needs to quit smoking. Won't. Does most things to distract himself from misery. Forgot how to cry a laugh. The Doomer is a play on the word boomer, an older generation of people born during the post-World War II baby boom, which has also become a meme. The boomer is usually shown as clueless and out of touch with the values and struggles of younger people. The two often clash. Although the doomer is usually tied to young men in their 20s, it's more of a mindset. Anyone can be a doomer. They can be young or old, but what they all have in common is a sense of utter hopelessness in the state of the world. They're not fulfilled. They work unsatisfying jobs. They have no intimate relationships. They reject all the conventional paths for trying to make their lives better. Many people try to dismiss doomers as overly dramatic, that they just need to pull themselves together and stop being so sad. But I think this is too dismissive and not really a fair picture of what's happening. Because even though it's meant to be an amusing meme, many of the concerns of the Doomer actually come from a real and valid place. We do live in a time where the cost of living keeps going up, while wages aren't keeping pace. We struggle with inflation. Those who've worked hard to get higher education are finding that their degrees aren't as valuable as they used to be, while at the same time being more expensive than ever. Graduates enter the workforce with crippling student loan debt, and they're overwhelmed. Increasingly, many people are becoming uninvolved and detached from conventional life. We see it in movements like the Great Resignation, where many people are opting out of jobs and careers that don't offer them a clear way to direct their own destiny. They're made to feel like replaceable cogs in a machine that uses them for productive labor and not much else where they end up doing work that doesn't fulfill their soul or inspire them creatively. And so the Doomer worldview is more widespread than you might think. We see it in popular culture, in movies like Joker. The story follows Arthur Fleck, who is shown as a victim of an uncaring and corrupt society. He struggles to take care of his mother while dealing with his own mental illness. He has an unusual condition that makes him laugh uncontrollably at inappropriate times. He can't help it. At the same time, the social services and programs that he relies on to survive are slowly disappearing. They're being defunded. Over and over again, Arthur faces a cold and uncaring world that ignores his suffering. When he's randomly attacked in the streets just for trying to do honest work as a clown, no one comes to help him. In one of the most unsettling moments in the movie, we learn that the only romantic relationship in Arthur's life wasn't real. It was all in his imagination. Even more heartbreaking, the one thing that brings him joy, trying to make people laugh as a comedian, is something he completely fails at. And what's worse, he's relentlessly mocked in a talk show just for trying to follow his passion. All of this leads him to lose hope in any kind of a positive future. And when a group of drunk and wealthy men threaten him on a train. This is the last straw. He snaps, reacting with violence. And even more terrifying, we find that there are many men who feel the same way Arthur does. They're angry at a society that's left them behind. And Arthur brings them all together. His transformation into the Joker is complete. The Doomer meme is only a few years old, but fundamentally, it's not really a new idea. But is there something unique about our times where the Doomer worldview seems to resonate with so many people? I think there's at least two parts to this, and we'll look at each of them in this video. If we look at the past, organized religion used to be a much bigger part of Western life. The church was the spiritual center. It gave us a sense of certainty in a world that was unpredictable and harsh. It's where we would turn to 
in all of our most important moments. But today, organized religion is declining. People are losing trust in their institutions and leaving in huge numbers. There's many reasons for this in the West, from allegations of corruption and abuse scandals, all of which have led to growing cynicism. But I think there's an even bigger reason why the church is in decline. Because people are still looking for something transcendent in their lives. That has never gone away. But the church isn't giving it to them anymore. Most churches now feel very dead in an experiential sense, in that they've been stripped of all mysticism and direct connection with the divine. And today, all that's left is a set of bland and uninspired rules that tell us how to live our lives without giving us an inspired vision of what that could be. The church feels less and less relevant. And let's face it, it's also a bit dull. In the Catholic Church, he's the only guy who gets more boring when he sings. And then Jesus goes down to the well and gives him a bushel of asparagus. Ah, boring into the rock of injustice. Boring. 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 Which is really too bad, because having a real spiritual experience is anything but boring. A true spiritual moment lifts you outside of yourself. It connects you with the universe and all of life within it, giving you a profound sense of meaning and hope to trust in something bigger than yourself and to know that you're not alone. It's one of the most powerful and transformative experiences you can have. In fact, there's growing evidence that the need for spiritual transcendence may even be encoded in our DNA. In 2004, geneticist Dean Hammer put out a book called The God Gene. In it, he argues that spirituality isn't just measurable, it's inherited, and it may have a genetic basis. We're hardwired to seek out the transcendent. Why? Every society in the world has developed some kind of spiritual practice. We see it in shamanic traditions that have appeared all over the world, which somehow are very similar to each other. Shamanism has a very ancient history, and many traditions incorporated psychedelics in their spiritual rites and rituals. And there's evidence that we evolved with the use of psychedelics in a way that may have reorganized our brains, kickstarting the growth of cognition, early art, language, and technology. Terence McKenna called it the stoned ape theory, a controversial idea proposed in his 1992 book, Food of the Gods. So psychedelics are one way to experience this very direct connection with the divine. But there are many spiritual practices that can take us there. The problem for us in the West is that our churches no longer give us this direct spiritual experience. What it's done instead is left a huge spiritual void in our lives. And whenever there's a void, it has to be filled by something. So what has taken its place? When you think of science, you probably think of a method for investigating nature. You imagine scientists using evidence and logic to come up with theories to explain the universe in an objective way. But science has become more than a method. It's become a worldview, a philosophy often called materialism. Materialism is the idea that the basic reality of our universe is matter. Everything that happens, everything we find in nature, is purely physical. It's the belief that the universe is a kind of machine, and so are we. Even things that seem non-material like thoughts, consciousness, memory, and love, all of it, according to materialists, are physical to the core. Materialists believe that nature has no purpose, that evolution has no direction, and that eventually we will be able to explain everything scientifically in purely physical terms. If this is true, if we're nothing more than biological machines, if we live for no other reason than to survive and reproduce, then the universe is fundamentally meaningless. And so too are human lives. It would mean that we're a cosmic accident. And the fact that we're even conscious and self-aware at all is a product of random forces outside of our control. This is an incredibly disempowering worldview. And it's also the default belief system for almost every educated person 
in the Western world. If this is the human story, is it really all that surprising that many of us can't see any kind of a compelling answer for our most basic spiritual questions? Because if the materialists are right, if after we die, nothing is left of us, and if life is fundamentally meaningless, then how do we live our lives while we're here? One of the most widespread answers in a lot of our cultural messaging is to live a life of hedonism. Hedonism is an approach to life where we seek out as much physical pleasure as we can. The problem is that constantly chasing pleasure is almost guaranteed to make you unhappy. It's often called the pleasure paradox. One of the strongest examples I've seen of this is the 2003 documentary Born Rich, which was filmed and directed by Jamie Johnson. Jamie is an heir to the Johnson & Johnson fortune, the company that brought us Band-Aids, Johnson & Johnson baby products, and Johnson & Johnson pharmaceuticals. It's one of the most profitable companies in the world, and they are one of the wealthiest families. In the film, Jamie reveals that he's about to get a huge inheritance on his 21st birthday. The movie also shows us the lives of 10 other young heirs who are also in line to inherit huge fortunes of their own. It's a fascinating look at the private world of young billionaires, a world often shrouded in secrecy. But here's what's interesting. All of these heirs are young. They're entering the prime of their lives. They're attractive, and they have more wealth than anyone could reasonably need in a lifetime. They're completely free to pursue anything they want. And so they party. They eat delicious meals. They travel to beautiful and exotic places. You'd think that this would make them the happiest and most fulfilled people in the world, but it doesn't. The documentary shows us just how many of them are completely miserable. Their lives are aimless, empty, and dysfunctional in a way that's hard to imagine unless you've seen it. Why? Psychological research tells us that there's two main kinds of human motivation, and we all have a mixture of both. Imagine, for example, that every weekend you sit down and write stories. You do it because you love it. It brings you joy in and of itself. You'd do it for free, even if no one paid you. Psychologists call this intrinsic motivation. But imagine now that you start writing not because you love it, but because you feel pressured to write. Maybe it's because your parents are pushing you to do it. Or maybe you only do it for the money, for the external rewards. This is what psychologists call extrinsic motivation. Research shows that the more you're driven by extrinsic values, the more likely you are to be depressed and anxious. And that is the situation we find ourselves in. From the moment you're born, you are immersed in a world that conditions you to believe that all of life's answers are outside of you. We all live in a machine designed to get us to neglect the very things that would give us meaning and fulfillment. For the young heirs in the film Born Rich, it's not that their wealth is making them miserable, it's the fact that they're focused on material things. This isn't to say that wealth and pleasure are bad, they're not. What it means is that we can't make them the central meaning of our lives. So where does that leave us? And how do we find meaning in spiritual fulfillment? These are the questions we'll look at in the next video. Once this video is available, you'll see it appearing on the left side of your screen. If it's not yet available, I think you'll like the video on the right on the power of the hero's journey and how understanding it can transform your life for the better. And I'd love to know, what gives you meaning and spiritual fulfillment in your life? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, please show your support by pressing the like button. Thanks as always for watching, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.